So, uh, you know, I want to to uh, revisit this this one uh, whole issue of Donald Trump starting in 2006 absolutely altered his business plans, his, the way that he does business. Prior to 2006, he always used other people's money and bank money and, you know, put his name on things, but he would leverage things. And, you know, it's the way that you make more money faster, right? Then he had all these bankruptcies. And following, and in, starting in 2006, he started paying cash for things. Apparently, according to the reporting that we're seeing, $400 million in cash. His son, Eric, is on the record saying that $100 million of that came from Russian oligarchs. And, of course, then you've got the Kazakhstan and the, the, the Stan and that Stan and, you know, it's all these other countries. So here's the question. If the, the case that Robert Mueller puts together, if that case comes out to be that Donald Trump is owned by foreign oligarchs, billionaires from other countries, whether it's Russia or Uzbekistan or, you know, Slovenia, or wh whatever it might be, although it's looking like a lot of them would be from Russia, if it turns out and... and has the evidence that would satisfy the average American that Donald Trump and his family, the entire Trump crime family, that they are owned by foreign forces. And the reason why Donald Trump has been going so easy on Russians is because he is owned by foreign forces. You know, hey, let's try and do away with the Magnitsky Act and all this kind of stuff. Is that, if that's the case, if this is what comes out, instead of, you know, oh my God, he was having sex with a porn star and trying to hide it from his wife and the rest of the country, what if instead it's what he's been trying to hide from us isn't just that he's not a billionaire, but he's actually broke, which I think many of us have been assuming for at least a decade or two. And we know now that back in the 80s and 90s, when he was claiming to be a billionaire, he was, at the first Forbes list, he was only worth $5 million. And that was before the bankruptcies. But if what it turns out is that Donald Trump owes $400 million to a bunch of foreign oligarchs, and we've seen, I mean, you know, Jared Kushner was, you know, his sister was over there in China making the sales pitch, hey, if you invest in the Kushner properties, you can get a green card to go to the United States. And basically selling green cards. You just have to invest a minimum of a million bucks, I think it was, or maybe it was a half a million or whatever it was. So we've got, I mean, the Kushners have been nailed, basically, you know, pay for play with citizenship or green cards and things. But what if Trump has been doing that in a big way all this time? Is that going to be enough for Americans to say, whoa, that is, that is inappropriate. We don't want this guy, you know, we want to impeach this guy. Or does it take sex, right? It was like, you know, at least for the Republicans, all this storm and drang around Bill Clinton. Oh, my God, he had sex, and then he lied about it. We can't have that. So which is going to be worse, right? Being involved with foreign organized crime or having sex with a porn star. What do you think? What do you think could bring down Trump? I'm increasingly thinking there's almost nothing that could bring down Trump. Because as long as he's got the support of a bunch of billionaires who are looking out for their own economic interest and are willing to lie in their advertising and in the right-wing think tanks that they subsidize, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to take down anybody like Trump politically.